My name is Katia, I'm 13 and I live in Hendon. I first learned about climate change and the environment mostly through school and through my parents. My grandpa was working quite hard on some ideas to do with global warming. And he began talking to me a bit and I got quite interested in it. And so I decided that I was gonna try and do my bit. Now I'm beginning to think more deeply about kind of solutions and things like that. I don't eat red meat and I try and limit the amount of kind of dairy products and we're quite aware of kind of where our food comes from and trying to buy more locally. I've invested my money in an eco bank so they're investing in sustainable companies. We try and cycle and take the tube where possible as well. Amazing piece of work that she's done. It really shines her in a, in a great light. She's been a member of the Eco uh, Committee. She's produced a couple of posters uh, to encourage people to think about their waste and to think about biodiversity. We all know that students of the future, they're the ones who are going to be responsible for making policy decisions in a few years' time. They get it. They really do get it. So the school is planning to be carbon free by 2030. There's also lots of wildlife around, so we have like bees and bat boxes around the school. I'm trying to kind of get more people interested. Even if you only make small changes, they will count towards something bigger. I really encourage young people and students to get involved in any climate related activities that they can. It's an honor to be speaking to you all today. I believe that young people like me should have a greater influence on the issue of climate change. So I'm delighted to be speaking today about my ideas surrounding the topic and the action that I think we should take. Firstly, I'd like to speak about the importance of education. What if climate change was central to the geography and science curriculum in all schools across the world? We all need to be more deeply educated about the crisis. The 20 warmest years on record have been in the past 22 years. This is a disaster for life on our planet. The world is calling for help and we must answer quickly before it's too late. We should inspire young people, encourage them and make sure they understand that if everyone makes small changes, they could add up to something far greater. For most of us in the modern Western world, our lives revolve around money. We should take advantage of this. Some people may not want to change their lifestyle without any sort of motivation that's close to them, but they may change their minds when they hear that money is involved. I think that we should develop an eco-lifestyle app. This app would keep track of when and how you travel, what kind of foods you buy, whether your energy is renewable, and how often you buy from fast fashion brands. One website states that the average American throws away approximately 37 kilos of clothing yearly, and it takes 200 years for polyester fiber to decompose in landfill. There could be several levels on this app, and on reaching a certain level, you could qualify for a reduction in income tax for that year. As you reach higher levels, the reduction would get higher. Having several levels of this app could help create friendly competition between family and friends. I also think that introducing or strengthening existing carbon taxes for large companies that emit huge amounts of greenhouse gases through their production and supply chains would be beneficial. 71% of global emissions come from only 100 companies. This tax would mean that for every tonne of carbon and methane emitted by a company, there would be a high charge. Methane's impact on global warming is 84 times higher than CO2s, so we must incorporate methane emissions into our discussions as well. Carbon taxes would encourage companies to look for greener approaches to production and reduce harmful greenhouse gas emissions. The money accumulated from carbon taxation could be used to build solar panels and wind turbines all over the world. Solar panels could be built on top of large buildings, train stations and anywhere that receives enough sunlight. Another beneficial place to put solar panels is on top of outdoor car parks. This creates energy for the local area, as well as providing shade for the cars. The solar panels would need to have a special curved design at the edge to prevent icicles accumulating in the winter and dropping onto cars. I would also raise awareness about an energy generation idea called OTEC, which stands for Ocean Thermal Energy Conversion. OTEC is a method of renewable energy production, which uses the difference in ocean water temperature using warm water from the surface and cold water from deeper in the ocean, along with a working fluid, generally ammonia, in order to spin a turbine, therefore generating electricity. OTEC was first considered in the 19th century and the first plant constructed in 1930. There are a few OTEC plants currently in operation across the globe, 
for example in Japan, but for them to make a significant difference, there need to be thousands. The advantage of OTAC plants is that they are situated in the middle of the ocean, so they don't cause any disruption to people or to wildlife. One of these plants could prevent burning 1.3 million barrels of oil each year and prevent CO2 emissions of over half a million tonnes per year, which is equivalent to 100,000 cars. One global team of engineers have recently modelled that if there are enough OTEC plants around the world, that the reduction of fossil fuel emissions could hold global warming to 1.5 degrees C. Thank you all for listening to my ideas today. Our future is in your hands. Please, don't drop it.